we know S. Now, let's go back and, and do our, our steps one by one. Step number one is you're supposed to make up a claim. Now, you should be pretty proficient at doing those steps because you had to do a lot of steps uh, last, last homework. So we want to state our claim. And the opposite of the claim. You guys would be so good at hypothesis testing. Yeah. What's our claim? Definitely mu, not p, right? Not talking about proportion. Definitely mu. Greater than is this one or this one? Which one? That or that? That's greater than. So the equal that, that's important, right? Because that dictates where our null hypothesis is. That that's a big thing. We have to get that right. So mu is greater than twelve. When it says test the claim, that's where we're getting our claim. Greater than twelve ounces. Of course, the opposite is, is just really flipping that sign around and putting the equal somewhere. So we have mu, we would have 12 less than or equal to is the opposite statement than greater than. Which one of these things is going to be our h sub 0, the top or the bottom? Wow. Wherever that equality is, that's our h sub 0. h sub 1 would therefore be our claim. Oh, let me ask you a critical thinking question. Are we going to be able to prove our claim correct in this situation? Yes. The only thing you can prove correct, if it works out for you, is h sub 1. If we prove h sub 1 correct, that means our claim is correct. You follow? That's why I said in, in order to actually prove a statement, you've got to somehow state it so that it's going to be h sub 1. h sub 0, you can't ever prove that right. You can only prove it wrong. Okay, so we got that. Let's look at step number two. It's basically just a restatement of these things. But it's important because we, we replace the less than or equal to with, with an equality, and that gives us the information we need for our test statistic. So we'll want our h sub 0 first, then we'll want our h sub 1. h sub 0, tell me what I need to write. Mean equals 12 hours. Good, we replace this with an equal sign because our h sub 0 has to have an equals. That's telling us what this is going to be. We never change a sub 1 though. That's telling us what type of test we have, either a left tail, right tail, or a two tail test. You okay with that so far? So first, first one, really important, not too hard, but really important uh, step. Test number three is probably the easiest. Test number three, you just, you just give me alpha. It's 0 .01, that stands for a significance level. And test number four, notice how you do the same exact thing for every single type of problem we've had so far. So far. Test number four is where you make your decision whether you're using a Z or a T. In our case, because we don't know our sigma, we know our S, we're going to be using a T test statistic here. So the few things we need to know about a T test statistic, we need to know X bar, S, mu, and N. So in our case, our t, our t test statistic, what is our x bar in our case, ladies and gentlemen? What's our x bar? Yeah, our x bar comes first. x bar is the evidence that's from our sample because that, that's our sample mean. So 12.11 is what we're looking at. Minus. 12.11 minus. What is our mu? How much is our mu? Good, it comes from your h sub 0. That's why we stated that way. So you look back at your h sub 0, it says, oh, your mu, what this thing is, that's 12. That's what we're testing as our claim. So this is our evidence saying, is this far enough? Look, look at it. What this basically says is, is this far enough away from 12? Clearly it's bigger than 12, but is it big enough? Is it bigger enough? Is it, is it big enough to a significant level? That's a good example. To say that we are producing too much soda in these cans. That's the idea. Divided by, what is our S in this case? Why is it S and not sigma again? Okay. Divided by the square root of, what's our square root? Divided by the square root of 39. Okay. <coughs> 
Do the math for me. Figure that thing out. That's something you guys are going to have to be able to do. Remember, you can do this as a way of getting around this whole division symbol thing. You can do 12.11 minus 12, you're going to get 0.11. Divide that by 0.27 and multiply by the square root of 39. Do the same exact thing. You should get 2 point something. 2 point what? 2.54. Okay, 2.54. Now, I also have to tell you that, that T tables are typically to three digits. If you look at your T table, aren't those to three digits? Get out your T table for me. Do they give it to you to three digits? Point something, something, something? Yeah. Okay, so give me this to three digits, please. Okay, show of hands. How many people have calculators out there? Keep your hands up if you're able to find that. All right, that's good. That's fantastic. So our test statistic is 2.544. Now, in the previous sections, we had two options. We had a p-value method. We had the traditional method. The p-value method would do this. Look at me. The p-value method would draw a picture. It would be a certain type of tail test. It would put this on there, right? And put that on there, and then would find the area associated with that value. However, if you look at your t-table right now, there's actually no way to do that. You look to see where this, this was, you look at your degrees of freedom, you look at your significance level, but it's very hard to do, right? There, there's not a 2.544 on your, your table there exactly what you, what you have to have. So it's really kind of an approximation if you were to try to use your table with the p-value here. Now, will your calculator do it? Yeah, yeah, your calculator will. You do an uh, inverse t distribution, and that would give you the, the um, I'm sorry, use your t distribution. That would give you the area in the tail here. So you can do it with the calculator. For us, though, p-value methods would be real difficult because your table's not going to give it to you. So we just use the traditional. So for step number five, we, there's no two options anymore. There's just this. Draw your picture like we're comfortable with, and tell me whether we're a left tail, a right tail, or a two tail test, and why. Ah, so we look here. This tells us where where we're at. So this is kind of an important thing, right? This tells us two pieces of information. First, the mu for your test statistic also tells you a left tail, right tail, or two tail test. This one's a right tail. So over here we'll go. Okay, right tail test. Now the traditional method said you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to look your alpha up in some sort of table and give me a critical value. So we're going to be looking for a critical value here. That's what the traditional method was. Remember doing traditional method on your, your homework, right? Critical value. It will separate this into the fail to reject region and the reject region. Which one's the fail to reject region, left or right? So this is FTR, fail to reject. And that's my rejection region. Hey, what's the area in our, our tail? What's the area in our tail? You can, don't, yeah, that's right. What is it? Yeah, the, the area in the tail is, is the, the value to which we're significant enough. It says, okay, if we're, if we're past that level, saying that's really, really rare, right? That, that says our rareness, that's what that is. It says if you're, if you're past the 0 .01 marker, where there's only a 1% probability that you're over there, that's pretty darn rare. That's saying that, that your null hypothesis is probably incorrect if you're over here. If you're over here, well, you can't say that's not enough evidence. That tells you how rare you're supposed to be. So what we do is we use that, use that how rare you're supposed to be, the significance level, to find a marker for that according to the T value, which we're comparing it to. That's the whole idea. So here our tail was, yeah, you guys had it, 0 0.01. Where you get that is from your alpha. That's why we call our, the area in the tails alpha. That this, our significance level is alpha. So it comes down to you. You've got to be able to look up 0 .01 in that table that I had you pull out, in your T table, the T distribution, and figure out what your critical value is. You know a couple things about that, right? First thing you need to, tell, you need to know whether we're talking about a one-tail or two-tail test. So I want you to look at the top of your table. 
And at the top of your table there, it says that. It breaks it down nice and neat for you. Do you see it? It says the area in one tail up at the top. It says the area in two tails down at the bottom. Then it gives you degrees of freedom. Do you remember how to find your degrees of freedom? Mm -hmm. yeah. What is your degrees of freedom here? So our degrees of freedom specifically is how much? 38. 38. Do we have a 38 on here? If we don't have a 38, for, for instance, if you're more than, more than 41, right, you, you have to go to just what's closest to because there's not that much difference after, after about 40 or so. So we're going to go to 38. That's the row that we're going to be in. What column are we going to be in? Well, let, let's take a look at that. Are we talking about a one tail or a two tail test? So we're going to look up the one tail. How much area was in our one tail? How much? 2.49. Oh, area in one tail? 0 0.01. 0 0.01. Okay, very good. So area in one tail says 0 0.01. So we're going to go down there to all the way, uh, let's see. Wait, you looked up 38, right? So we're down at 38. 2.4, did you find the 2.429? All right. So we use our T distribution to go ahead and look up our alpha, depending on whether a left tail or right tail test, and find a critical value that we're going to t test our test statistic against. Would you raise your hand if you okay finding the 2.429? Great. Now is our decision time. Decision time says, okay, now you're going to look at that and you're going to actually test your test statistic. This is where you put this on the chart. Where does our test statistic fall? Does it fall in the fail to reject region or the reject region? Which one? Reject. Clearly reject region. It's 2.54. 2 Here's 2.4. It's just slightly over there. But it is in the rejection region. Saying, okay, well, if, if we fall over here, am I going to reject H of 0 or fail to reject H of 0? Reject. We're in the rejection region, so we're going to reject. What does rejecting H of 0 mean? Good. Now look at why, why this works again for the last time, okay? So if you reject H sub 0, that means you reject this statement, your null hypothesis. That means you accept H sub 1. Since H sub 1 was our claim, we just proved our claim. So rejecting H sub 0 automatically accepts H sub 1. If H sub 1 is your claim, which it will be if it's stated properly, uh, if, you, if you've rejected H sub 0, your claim is going to be proved right, basically. Uh, you're going to accept H sub 1. That proves the, our statement. And what we can say here is, is uh, number 7. If you reject your H sub 0 and you accept your H sub 1, that means there is enough evidence to support the claim that and then you restate whatever claim I have told you. 